Hello, tarnished and TikTokers. My name is TB Sky, and welcome to the boss designs of Elden Ring. My God, finally, at long last, our long years of suffering are over. There is a new, true, apparently, just going by the general tone of the reviews, souls like available for us to peruse and pursue. And unlike every single other goddamn Souls game where people were spoiling me on everything, this one cannot be backseated because I am playing it within an hour of the goddamn thing coming out. That being said, uh, part of the experience of playing a Souls game early at launch is also information sharing among the community. So this time around, I am going to be a little bit more casual about being spoiled, because I suspect with Elden Ring being what it is, spoilers are necessary to find even half of what the game has to offer. But uh, you know what? Let's not hang around on the menu for too long. The music is awesome, but I want to get to the actual video g g g gaming. Okay, character creation right away. No intro cinematic yet. Oh, that's very man with the iron mask, quite literally. Right, so stats. What is each thing? So shield, sword, blah, 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 endurance, intelligence, faith, and shield. So wretch would be the, yeah, the deprived, essentially, of this one. Uh, let's see what we have here. Confessor being higher in faith. Higher in intelligence and dexterity, they have magic, okay, magic and sword. That's bow and sword, so that's the, yeah, that's the high dexterity build, that would be the samurai, that makes sense. Yeah, I think we'll start with the wretch, just to give us flexibility, and then, then we'll work from there. Please choose a body type, A or B, that would be, yeah, in, instead of male or female, which I appreciate. Blah, 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 amber medallion increases maximum HP. Gain many runes. Oh, right, I remember some of these from the network test. Breaks the seal on imp statues, but can only be used once. What does that mean? Well, there's lore here, isn't there? Uh, let's see. The most common face, blah, blah, blah. Where were ones? A regal face found among those who claim noble blood in the lands between. Proud and seclusive tribe of folk, well versed in ancient legends and heresies. Hardy people of the unforgiving north. Oh, yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's just a Viking. I mean, I guess I technically am a Viking, uh, so let's mess with that. There's definitely a remix there. Uh, any cool tattoos? Not that we'll see them, really, like because we'll be way too busy just putting helmets on him. Uh, but... Eye patch. Ooh! Secret sequel to Near Automata! Actually, f*** it. Yeah, let's give him an eye patch over one eye. That seems cool. Let's put a little bit of eyeliner on like, because it, it makes the eyes stand out. That's cool. Skin features. Pores. I want no pores. This man cannot sweat. Dark circles? Oh, dark circles. Yeah, maximum dark circles. <laughs> Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh. Ooh, nice braids. And I'm glad that they're not gender restricted as far as I can tell. Because that's so silly. <laughs> I'm t I, I'm sort of I'm vacillating between making a character who looks sort of vaguely cool actually, and one who's just as as silly as humanly possible, and I don't know what to pick. I don't know what what way to go. I've made him serious so far, so let's uh yeah let's let's just keep him with the the Viking haircut. That looked that looked okay on him. I kind of wish he had like a side cut proper. Um, but oh well. Let's go with you, shall we? I feel like you're enough to be going on with. The fallen leaves tell a story. Elden Ring was shattered. In a 
our home, across the fog, the lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Oralu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome dung eater, and Sir Gideon Othmir, the all knowing. again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. So that was a lot. Man, I was hoping for a fully animated intro cutscene. Those are good for editing intros to the series around, but oh well. Let's examine the starting area. So essentially we are on the... <laughs> in, in, Souls likes being souls like. Could this be a dead end? Ah, I see, we're already memeing. Try fingers, butthole, yes. Praise the Elden Ring. Yeah, you know what? Rated good. Um, <laughs> I see we're already, the Souls community is already in full swing, huh? Are you ready? Time for Elden Ring. Tarnished, wizened finger. Being a thing that does us something. That's the one you use to write messages. Right, right, right. So, we are undead, as we often are in Souls games, called back from death. And I guess this, then, would be our tomb. Which, for a tarnished of no renown... Seems, like, relatively elaborate. Like, you'd think if you were a nameless nobody, they'd just throw you in a hole in the ground, not a nice church like this one.
We need armor. The Chapel of Anticipation. And people are <laughs> immediately getting themselves killed. Jumping off the ledge. Yeah. Something incredible ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be back in Souls games. Like, the meme lords that leave these matches, they annoy me sometimes, but it's also kind of... It's also kind of nice in its way. Blocked shut. Okay. Let me guess. Beautiful. I mean, it is. It is genuinely... Genuinely quite gorgeous. And the thing I note about the world tree there, hello Yggdrasil of some sort, uh, is that there seems to be leaves floating down from it. And usually, when leaves are falling off of trees, that's an indication that a dying is coming. Or at least that it's becoming autumn and then winter. Precious item ahead? Yeah, you liar. And yet, I can't... I have to test. Oh, that... Yeah, okay. Right, we know what that is. We know what that is. That's a portal. Okay, there's a non-zero chance that we're gonna get the mandatory big boss kicks your ass boss fight in just a sec. Alright. Who's the asylum demon for this one? By the way, that's a pose. Oh, A grafted sire. Okay. Hi. Am I supposed to just, like, die? Or am I actually supposed to try and beat you? Because usually you're supposed to die. And you have a big fuck off shield in front of you there, so... Oh, you're... Uh, troublesome. What are you made of? Oh, ah! Okay, fair enough. Fine, 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 fine. Ouch. This feels a lot like I'm supposed to... No, yeah, I'm supposed to die. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Oh, Flask of Crimson Tears. Thank you very much. That's the mana and health recovery. 
Well, okay, so that was the game doing the Souls thing of being like, hey, you're gonna die. You're gonna get your ass kicked. They're gonna be big enemy monsters that are gonna wreck your shit. You're gonna have to deal with it. Get used to it. Brave Tarnished, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. So that is a ghost of a person with very long arms. Suspiciously long arms. And a very long neck. Kind of Thumerian in their look, really. So does that first fight count as a death? properly hmm because I didn't get the you died screen so I'm sort of I'm sort of tempted to say no bonk let's do the tutorial just for the sake of it bonk Upon dying, you will be revived the last sight of grace. However, if there's a stake of Marika near where you died, you can choose to be revived there instead. Cool. So that's what those are, stakes of Marika. It's Marika, the endless, the eternal, some kind of primary goddess. Ah. Here's the first proper boss fight. Okay, he does not break so easily. Yeah, I don't think we're going to count him as a real boss. <laughs> I mean, technically, I guess, but only very technically. All right, tutorial complete successful. We get a gesture for our troubles. sacred tear, do I? No. But I did have that golden seed, so that was something. I remember this bit. You can set how many mana potions you want relative to health potions, and since I only have very that one skill right now that costs mana, that's perfectly fine for me. Don't have no spells. I have an item box to start with. That's lovely. Okay, well, let me guess. Secret passage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would say that. Use the tarnished furled finger to write a gold summon sign. Cooperative multiplayer will begin once you've been summoned. Okay, not doing that right away. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, clearly that goes away at some point because there's a message in there. But I guess for now. We go. Secret passage? Precious item. Yeah, I didn't think so. That good old Soulsborne 50-50 on whether something is helpful or a oh. post. Is there anything else in here? Well, welcome to the big beyond. And this asshole. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation, to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, 
there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will to Castle Stormvale, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Grafted. Mm hmm. Godric, huh? It's time you set off, I should think. To castle if you. It's time to castle if you. See okay, he's not intending to be any more useful. Hello, birdies. Why is it always beautiful? Dog. Something I noted when I played in the network test is that the world of Elden Ring, the, you know, lands between, they are a very different place than anything you visit in the other Soulsborne games. Well, maybe not so much Sekiro, but certainly... Dark Souls 1, 2, Bloodborne, and so forth. In those games, you're always visiting dying worlds, essentially. Like, places that are crumbling and falling apart from a sort of internal dying of the light. Um, or that are in some state of, of, like, decrepitude. And that's happening here. Like, certainly, we are among the ruins of civilizations. Like, we can see that, like, the edifices and kingdoms of man have fallen. But look at the nature. Like, there's a very different relationship between civilization and nature here. In Dark Souls 1, the relationship between civilization and nature was basically like a one-to-one. -one. As the Age of Fire fades, so too does the nature of Lordran. Like, where, th where things were getting stale and stagnant and kind of falling apart, and when you travel back to the past, you see a more lustrous and verdant version of the world. But this is like... This is just gorgeous, lustrous nature from start to finish. Anyway, there's big Mr. Horseman over there, and he is going to destroy us. Uh, utterly, if we try and take him on. Benefit of the network test again. Mm. And we could probably take him if we summon a few people, but, uh... I don't want to take him, it's too early. And it's characters like that one, um, that pose a bit of a challenge for this series, because... Do we count Mr. Horseman over there as a boss for the purposes of this series? Because this is the first character that we encounter that, like at least to my memory, definitely does qualify as one in the sense that this guy can kill you in two hits. And he's a big, dangerous bad guy. But can you derive, like, story, lore from his character design? I probably can, but, you know, who knows? Oh, yeah, also... Rolling goat. I love that so much. Some golden runes, thank you. Likely friend, oh yes. It's Santa Claus! You're a tarnished. I can see it, and I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. 
The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every customer counts, after all. Goodbye. Right, so I think what we picked up just now was... Yes. Rune consumable. And I think that gives us just enough for the crafting kit. Because he ain't wrong, it's the thing that we need. Yep. There we go. Wouldn't mind a shield also, or some armor. Uh, oh no, I need a torch. A torch is what I need. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. You will need crack pots or other containers to craft certain items. You'll not be able to ignore those items. Yes, I know. And this is the smithing table where we can do smithing on our things if we have the resources, which we do not. I, I'm sorely tempted to just run off in a direction and just go see what I can find. Like, see how far I can go before something horrible kills me. Because I know where a few things are. Again, benefits of the network test. There's a dragon down here. That we could activate. <laughs> Although it's probably not the greatest idea I've ever had. So we'll leave that out for now. And go grab some cheap souls instead. Or runes, I guess. This dog. We don't like dogs in Souls games. Gosh! Lovely collars. Hey, those are golden. Hang on. You have a golden collar on you, which is strange for a mutt in a swamp. I kind of desperately... Beast blood. Beast blood? Okay, found by hunting carnivorous beasts. Okay, I just needed to be sure. <laughs> no! I'm not getting killed by a torch. Yeah. Cough. Oh, wait, was there a fight down here? Or is it just the rats? I think it's just the rats. Yeah. Oh! Weak foe, you said! You said weak foe, Mr. Message on the ground. Those things killed me in two hits! That's a long range on that little dash. Very annoying. Guess that's what I get. <laughs> For playing as a tarnished with no armor. Anything good in here? Ah, uh, what? A transport trap? Oh God, where's it taking me? Oh no. What in the... Gravity stone fan? Gravity stone ch What the hell? Well, now where am I?
Oh, I don't like the look of this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Ah! What the hell? You! Oh, screw you! Oh no. Oh no, I can't. Oh no! <laughs> I'm stuck here! Oh no! Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I figured once I died, I'd be taken back to my last side of grace. Nope. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Excellent. Wonderful. Great. Okay. Do you have something? Anything? No? Okay. Why can you hit me from everywhere? Oh, side of grace. 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 Okay, we're free. We're free. We are free. Ooh. Rot grease. Secret passage ahead. I, I predict that exactly one, one of the secret passage messages is gonna be true. Like, one of them is. Oh, oh sh Oh, now. Ah, uh, this is a little, um, this is a little Yarnum. Oh, this is a lot Yarnum. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> this is so, oh, oh, this is bad. Could this be a boss? Is this the poison swamp? Have I found the poison swamp already? Oh. Don't like that. They don't seem too agile, at least. It's just don't... Don't walk into their giant poison cloud, I guess. No, but seriously, is this the poison swamp? It's the poison swamp! We found the poison swamp! Poison swamp! Successfully located. Okay. Well, now we know where that is. Can I do any damage to those things? I have to imagine I can't. Oh! Ah! Hell! No! No, 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 no. Okay, I can kind of damage those guys, but I don't want to fight them. Why do you have so many arms? Why does everything have so many arms? Why don't I have more arms? Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is the soul's feeling. Okay, I mm, really should go back to an area where I can do something and where I could maybe, I don't know, find a way to level up. Um, Celia, Town of Sorcery. Try Sorcery. Okay, so that's... There are gonna be doors that are locked by magic? Well, that's interesting. Really hope my character can learn that then without investing all of their, like, without doing a sorcery build. Be wary. Invisible. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I have nothing to lose, really, so. Oh! What in the heck? Ghost man! Ow! Oh, oh, sh they, oh my god, oh my god! No, don't be invisible, don't be invisible. Stop being invisible. That's rude. Oh, jeez. Okay, Ghost Town. Oh lord. This is gonna be so cool when we come back and we actually have a build and gear and stuff. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, I see. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So... This place, presumably then, will be a place where, like, the golden trees that give everything else life have died. And here is a golden tree slowly beginning to grow again, restoring the area. Interesting. Like I said, again, a very different relationship between civilization and nature. Can I? Can I even? Okay, I can jump up there. I can, I can kind of get up there. Aha! What a thrill with darkness and silence through the night. Light flame? A seal was broken in town some. Oh, that's how you open the doors. Then, probably. Oh. Oh, I see some people have fallen down and died here. Eh. Aha! So we can jump down there and grab that item. From this man. Staff of Loss. Ah, rump. I was expecting a tongue butthole, but okay. So what seal did I break? Was it, uh... Oh, I think it was. And there's a boss in here. Oh, there's a boss. I, mm, this feels like spoiler territory. I I know I can't beat him. I absolutely can't beat him. Or it's, or they, or them, or whatever is. I, I know I can't. I know I can't. You can memorize sorceries and incantations. Knock sword stress. Oh, hello. Whoa, Jesus! Oh, I want that. I want that. I want that really badly. Oh, we're doing Ornstein and Smau early in this one. I want those weapons. Ow! Okay, they can't... F they can't do ranged attacks, at least, so that's something. Uh, well, I mean, by which I mean they can't do magic at me. But what they can do is bad enough. What I note about her, though, is that hat looks a lot like the crown of two kingdoms from Egypt. Is that the her? Are any of them her? Okay, right. So they just dodge immediately after you. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, right. I desperately want to keep exploring out here. But... I think it's time that we go back to somewhere where we have a chance of survival. Let's 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 stick to the low level areas from now on. What a trap! Holy sh from soft that f chest, you bastards! I'll remember this. Toidle, hello, Toidle. You're not hostile, right? No, Toidle. Oh, look at him. Oh no, wait, he's a. Oh, I don't want to hit him. Look at him! Look at this adorable boy! Can I ride you? Oh, come on! Just for a little while, come on! No, okay. Speaking of cool weapons, though, I seem to remember that there is one down here. Okay, well... <laughs> guess, guess I have to go and explore the game the normal way. That kind of makes me excited for what else has changed, though. Right, there's the enemy encampment. We could mess with that, but it'll mess us up.
greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Obviously, yes. I wonder if you refuse. Like, and you still beat the game if that changes anything. I'm sure, I'm sure someone will do that by this time tomorrow. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Okay, now we can level up. Use the spectral steed whistle to summon and ride your spectral steed. Now we have a horse. Whee! A horse with a double jump. And that's where we'll cut the first episode. Kinda. Uh, hi, Future Sky here, interrupting at a, well, not so much an awkward moment as an apparently entirely random one. As past Skyn mentioned when we were sneaking past the tree sentinel, that's the big golden guy on the horse, Elden Ring is a different beast from Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Bosses in those games are very deliberately placed roadblocks that sort of gate off your progress until you overcome them, but Elden Ring being an open world game, you can just kind of fuck off and not deal with them for dozens and dozens of hours. I know people who sunk more than 20 hours into this game before facing down the first major boss, and while I have been a little bit more direct in my approach trying to look for bosses, I have sunk 50 hours into this game at the time of writing and I have only faced 5 major bosses. The boss designs is based on a structure. One episode, one major boss. It's a very convenient format for the previous games, but it doesn't really work for this one. Elden Ring isn't structured around its bosses in the same way that Dark Souls and Bloodborne are, and so this series can't be either. Sometimes, Past Skyne will do his little handoff and tell me to analyze what he just destroyed while he goes off to find more things to hit with his big swords, and sometimes I'll just cut in and interrupt him because there's something I think we should talk about before he moves on. For example, to start with, let's collect some thoughts about what the fuck exactly is going on? There is nothing FromSoft loves, quite like dropping a player in the middle of a complex mythology with nary but a cryptic cutscene and a few item descriptions for context, but I think we can at the very least at this point draw out some vibes. And the first vibe, which is, to be fair, maybe not so much a vibe as it is a brightly lit neon sign with music and a social media account, is that Elden Ring is inspired by Norse and Germanic mythology. From the runes, to the character names, to the magic rings, to the definitely not Yggdrasil world trees that dominate the landscape, to the Ragnarok. 
which has already happened. As the intro cinematic describes it, the Elden Ring is shattered, apparently by some dude at a forge smacking it with a hammer, which, I don't know, that seems kind of fragile. At least the one ring had to be dropped in a volcano. But anyway, the ring is shattered, and soon after, Godwin the Golden is assassinated. His death, the first death of a demigod, precipitates the shattering, a cataclysmic war between the gods that ends with no victory and the kingdoms of the lands between shattered and in ruins. In Norse mythology, the Einherjar are warriors who fell in battle, but who are taken away by Valkyries to Valhalla, where they feast, fight, and frolic until the end of days, at which point they will be summoned from death to the battlefield once more in a last attempt to restore the order of the gods. In Elden Ring, the Tarnished are warriors who fell in battle, but who are raised again by Golden Grace, summoned from death to the battlefield once more in an attempt to restore the order of the gods. And by the way, the event that triggers the Ragnarok in Norse mythology is the slaying of Baldur the Beautiful, while the event that sets off the shattering in Elden Ring is the slaying of Godwin the Golden. So as I read it, in Elden Ring, you are essentially an Einherjar who was late for the Ragnarok and whose job it is now to pick up the pieces and perhaps undo the end of the world. Which means that Elden Ring is very technically a post-apocalyptic open-world role-playing game. Anyway, besides the story vibes, there are some visual vibes that emerge pretty early and which remain very consistent throughout the game. And we'll touch on more of these as we go, I'm sure, but we'll start with these two. Trees and limbs. Now, the trees are obvious. The landscape of the lands between is dominated by towering earth trees, whose name literally translates to earth trees, whose roots permeate the soil and whose great canopies spread out over the world in obvious homage to world trees like Yggdrasil. The cave where we awaken and the little dungeon where I fought the rats before getting caught in a transport trap has roots pouring in through the walls and ceiling. And although we avoided him, enemies like the tree sentinel well, actually, you know what? Let's do a quick boss to science episodes on him while we're here. We avoided the Tree Sentinel because I remember him from the network test, and he's basically so far beyond our level that fighting him would be an enormous frustrating chore and kind of a waste of time. But unlike what past Skyen thought in the episode, there is actually something interesting to be derived from his character design. He has two major design elements, trees and gold. Most obviously, his helmet is literally crested with a tree canopy, but his shield is also enveloped by roots. His cape has a stylized tree on it, and the barding on his horse is designed to resemble a blanket of leaves. He's called the Tree Sentinel, and his character design is not subtle about it. He's also wildly and conspicuously golden. Now, gold and trees, well... That's every single Erd tree. They're all golden, and they sprout forests of golden trees around them. Grace, the little light that brings us back from the dead and powers the bonfires, is golden, and is called golden by other characters repeatedly, and so, just as it has been in Souls games past, gold in Elden Ring is the color of the divine. Which means the Tree Sentinel is not just some random angry environmentalist trying to save the forest. This guy is connected to the Erd trees. He's connected to the gods. And so one wonders why he has apparently been told to kill us on sight. Anyway, the point of all of that is that trees are important. Like, look out for trees in Elden Ring, they're gonna come up. Anyway, besides trees, the other vibe was limbs. So let's talk about limbs. They've been important since moment one for Elden Ring, with the E3 reveal trailer for the game featuring this sequence and this one of the red-haired Valkyrie lady attaching a prosthetic arm to herself. And in playing Elden Ring, we are confronted with this imagery almost immediately. The player is introduced as a disembodied hand lying on the ground. That image repeats when Torrent finds us, and Melina too is introduced first by her hand, which is wearing a ring, by the way. Huh. And then, of course, there is the grafted scion. We'll talk more extensively about this creature in a later episode, but for now, just note that this is a creature entirely composed of arms, hands, and legs grafted onto a central body. A little deeper in the game, when I'm transported into the crystal mines, the centipede creature that kills me repeatedly with spells isn't actually insectoid at all. It doesn't have bug legs. It has dozens and dozens of human hands grafted onto its front, which is horrifying. And in the Poison Swamp, a little bit later, we run into these doll-like creatures that are similarly designed to have extra limbs. So Elden Ring has a thing about limbs and the grafting of limbs. 
And the funny thing about that is that you can graft limbs onto a person in medicine, but in arboric culture, the cultivation of trees, you can do the same thing. Take a living branch from one tree and attach it to a suitably prepared spot on another, and if you do it right, the new branch will graft onto the tree, living on and growing, but retaining the qualities of the tree that it came from. If you have a particularly delicious apple tree, you can graft its limbs onto other trees to make them produce that same delicious apple. So there's a connection, then, between the game's fixation with trees and the game's fixation with limbs. I think that in the metaphysics of Elden Ring, a trunk is a body, a branch is an arm, and a twig is a finger, or something along those lines, and these things represent power in some way. The power of the Erd trees rests in their many branching limbs that spread out all across the world, whether it's the roots or the branches in the canopy. Hence the finger relics that we pick up that allow for co-op, where, if you are co-oping with someone, you are referred to as a furled finger. Essentially, an extra limb, an extra bit of strength and power for the player that you're helping. And hence, the finger maidens, who alone have the unique power to turn runes into strength. To fertilize you, that you may grow, essentially. And speaking of finger maidens, let's talk about Melina. Melina is not a finger maiden. She makes that much clear. She simply offers to play the role of one. How she's able to do this without being one is not clear, but then a lot of things about Melina are unclear. She follows very much in the footsteps of the Emerald Herald and the Plain Doll that came before her. She's a soft-spoken and cryptic female character who knows more than she's letting on and who offers the player advice and comfort as well as the ability to level up. She asks us to take her to the foot of the Great Erd Tree. There's the centrality of that damn tree again, for reasons that she doesn't explain. And she seals our agreement to take her along with the gift of a ring. Now, even in stories that are not called Elden Ring, and which aren't about the power and importance of magic rings, this would be pretty pregnant with meaning as a gesture. The gifting of a ring is a classic symbol of an oath or a promise, a commitment. You could read the gifting of this ring as a kind of engagement, a metaphorical marriage to the player, a promise in some way to be faithful to one another. But since this game is called Elden Ring, and it is about the power and importance of magic rings, well, suffice to say, it feels like a slightly more meaningful gesture than just being handed a convenient game mechanic for traversal. Even if it's handled quite casually in the moment, this feels like it means something. As a character design, Melina is also quite plain. She's very pretty, but not ostentatious. She's dressed in a simple dress and traveling boots with a big drab cloak covering her form most of the time. This relative simplicity then allows the one mysterious thing about her visual design to stand out. An eye conspicuously kept closed with a tattoo on the eyelid. Norse mythology comes back to haunt us here, because Odin, very famously, surrendered one eye in exchange for wisdom and magical knowledge. And I wonder if that is what the eye signifies. That she has wisdom and knowledge beyond the ken of ordinary mortals? She certainly seems to. But it could also signify the opposite. A lack of knowledge and wisdom, a lack of perspective, a literal inability to see the whole picture, and I kind of also get that vibe from her, that she doesn't quite fully know what she's doing or why she's doing it. It could also be the sign of secrets, that she's keeping something from us, that she's literally not quite looking us in the eye. It could mean any of these things. It could mean none of them. It could mean nothing. Or it could mean all of it all at once. Hmm. And then there's that tattoo. I can't see quite what it depicts, but to me, it sort of looks like the skeletal claws of a dragon or something, which, again, there are the limbs and fingers coming back. But whatever it depicts, it is clearly important. A solitary young woman traveling alone, plain and unremarkable, except for a single tattoo over a conspicuously closed eye. You don't have to have read a lot of fantasy to recognize the tropes at play here. For all that Melina is like the Emerald Herald and the Plain Doll, at least mechanically, I also think that she is unlike them. I don't think she will just be standing by in passive support of the player. I think she has a destiny that she's seeking. And I think that in accepting her bargain and her ring, we have wedded ourselves to seeing it through with her. Hey! Thank you very much for watching the first episode of The Boss Designs of Elden Ring, which 
didn't really have a boss design in it. Or, well, I mean, we talked about the grafted scion and the tree sentinel a bit, but, uh, yeah. Elden Ring is a different kind of game, and this series kind of has to be different to fit it. There will be a boss design next time, though, I promise, and I will try as much as I can to make boss designs central to the episodes whenever possible. So, uh, how did you all like the new intro music? It was composed by my friend, Trey Watson, whose channel you can find linked in the description, and I originally commissioned it for the Dark Souls 3 series back when I thought maybe I was gonna make that first. Time happened, though, and then Elden Ring came out, and so here we are. Anyway, I'm sure a lot of you will prefer the old music, and that's okay. Like, those feelings are valid, the old theme was kind of iconic to the series at this point, and I don't blame anyone who isn't jazzed about the change. The new theme is here to stay, though, because, well, first of all, I like it better, so, you know, that kind of counts for a lot. But also, Boss Designs is maybe the thing I make that I am most proud of as a piece of technical work, and so I want it to have theme music that isn't just a piece I pulled off of Kevin MacLeod's website. I want it to be mine, you know? Anyway, uh, Elden Ring is big. Like, it's... boy, it's really big. There's a lot of game there, and I'm not 100% sure how I'll handle that from an editing perspective. I think ultimately I'm going to end up just not putting a hell of a lot of footage in any episodes at all. So, I will remind you that you can watch the full, uncensored, and unedited version of my adventures in the Lands Between over on my Let's Play channel, which is linked in the description. You won't get to see all of it in the episodes. They're simply... I just can't edit things like that. So if you want all of it, that's where it is. And if you enjoy the Boss Design series, I would greatly appreciate a like and maybe a comment down below, because it boosts things in the algorithm, and this series doesn't necessarily have a huge reach all on its own. And if you want to support me directly, well, I have a Patreon for that, or you can send me a one-time tip on my coffee link down below. There's also a merchandise store, if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, but if you can't do that, if you're not in a position to be able to, or hell, if you just don't want to, you absolutely do not have to. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to wash your hands and have solidarity with those who are worse off than yourself. Mm -hmm.